Well, hello everybody, I'm Maya Tusi and this is Tusi TV. It's been an absolutely crazy last few days. This week in the House of Commons, we already had uh, Lee Anderson defecting from the Tory party to Reform UK. That alone brought a lot of news and stories and rumours about everybody else also defecting from the Conservative Party. But this is actually about the new MP for Reform UK, <laughs> Lee Anderson, what he's actually been doing in Parliament as an MP, and he's actually doing his job, holding the power to account. As part of his role on one of the select committees, uh, he decided to grill uh, one of the bishops from uh, the Church of England uh, for going woke. Let's get on with the show. All right, everybody in the live chat will get your reaction as well. And straight after this, uh, we are going to be going to Manchester to meet some of you who are coming to you uh, to, to us to meet us uh, at our 400,000 subscribers party. This is what Lee Anderson did. We also have a video from the House of Commons this week uh, where uh, he basically scrutinised the uh, Guli Francis Dehani, who is a, a Church of England bishop. And Lee Anderson said the, the asylum system and the Church of England. Today, obviously, I gave uh, got to grill uh, Francis Dehani over the church's role in baptizing young illegal migrants who are switching their faith to Christianity in order to claim asylum. These are the fake conversion, obviously, and they know that if they say they are now Christian, they would not be able, uh, the government would not be able uh, to deport them back to the countries. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, was invited, Lee Anderson says, but he actually unfortunately declined. He was too busy washing his hair. Oh yeah, oops, no hair. I also asked uh, Lee Anderson says, how many illegal migrants is the Church, Church of England housing? Staggering response. Let's go to this video first, and then I'm going to show you and talk to you guys about this specific bishop. Because it's a, she's got a quite interesting background, let's just say. A little bit woke as well. Let's go to Lee Anderson and the Select Committee. Uh, Lee Anderson. Thanks, Chair. Um, Bishop, was you alarmed when, the, um, when Reverend Firth said that the only people he, he ever saw for baptism, time seekers, were at the appeal stage, not before or not after they'd been granted asylum, but strictly for an appeal? asylum was that alarming was that a red flag if that's his experience then that's his experience and i i you know i don't want to question it i've not heard that before but if he was a vicar that... if you was a vicar reverend in, in, in a local parish church would that be a red flag for you um, it would it would ensure that I was applying the process of discernment uh, as wisely mm. as I could if that was the pattern I was seeing I would want to be very would you careful. raise it with your superiors I would certainly raise it with colleagues to see if they were noticing a similar pattern um, uh, and if necessary, and I felt it was necessary, yes, I could, could, so could speak to my seniors as well. Okay, I think the previous um, witness sort of suggested, and he did in the end, that the, um, the Archbishop had turned a blind eye to this. Do you agree with him? Um, we don't operate that kind of system in the Church of England. You know, the Archbishop doesn't act as a CEO in the Church of England. Every diocese um, is, is um, led by the diocesan bishop together with a leadership team, uh, and we have responsibility for clergy within, um, within the fact that they're office holders. So clergy have a certain autonomy and, and responsibility in their own patches as well. So the Archbishop of Canterbury, even if he wanted to have that kind of responsibility, couldn't within the structures that we have. And we know the asylum process system is broken in this country. We all, we all know that. Do you think, uh, with what the Reverend Firth had to say, that the church is adding to the problem? Um, as I've said already, we want to be uh, part of the conversation going forward. And if we can help, and if there is data that is presented that that's, um, suggests that there is a serious problem, yep. then absolutely we want to be part of that conversation. Okay, final question, Chair, because I want to be brief. You, you said previously, I think, Bishop, that you, as a church you want to provide a warm and loving environment for, for refugees, asylum seekers. Can you tell the committee how many asylum seekers the Church of England actually house in their vicarages and properties mm -hmm. around the country? So I can't talk for the whole country, I can talk for Chelmsford Diocese, um, where we currently have 11 uh, of our uh, vacancies. A rough ballpark figure around the country. I I'm really sorry, I just don't have that evidence. I can only speak for Chelmsford Diocese. That's so I can give you the information about Chelmsford if you want. Is it hundreds? 
In Chelmsford Diocese? No, no, around the country. I don't know what other dioceses do. We, we can try and find out if you want it, but I, I really don't know what the policy is in, in other dioceses because this is what I'm trying to say. Every diocese. And what I'm is trying to say is, Bishop, are you, pre- are you practicing what you preach? Oh, Excuse absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. There, there are many, many examples of churches offering um, warm welcomes through um, <coughs> events, through support, through practical support, through guidance, and so on. Um, but in practical terms around housing, I can only speak for Chelmsford Diocese. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh oh. Okay, so. <laughs> this is just a classic example of the modern Church of England, ladies and gentlemen. They are. Okay. Face value, on the surface, what we know, instead of what we're trying to guess. They seem at least clueless and ignorant, but they can't be that stupid. They know that these conversions are fake. They know that when they come out and claim that all the churches, Church of England is is basically, well, they're advocating for everybody to take in illegal migrants, and they say, we're going to do it too. Are 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 you actually doing it? How many churches are being closed down and how many of them are being bought by the, the, the Islamic centers to build mosques? And that is happening all over the country in terms of the number of churches going down and churchgoers and number of mosques going up as well. Put aside the problem with the fake conversions to Christianity to pretend uh, that, that you're now Christian in order to avoid deportations. Now, the reason Church of England has gone woke is because of the pressure from society, certain aspects of society. Uh, for decades and decades, we used to make fun of uh, young student political activists. We used to say, ah, look at these clowns and university campuses. and Everybody should ignore them. They are woke. They are weird. Uh, the young Jeremy Corbyn types. But those guys have now grown up and they are now in the positions of power because we didn't take them seriously. We didn't do anything about it to challenge their ideas. Um, for example, let's talk about a Gulli. Uh, Francis uh, Dehghani, the the bishop that Lee Anderson was challenging. She has an interesting background, yet she seems to be a little bit progressive, let's just say, for a bishop. Her real name is Golnar Eleanor Gulli Francis Dehghani, born on the 18th of June 1966. She's an Iranian-born British Anglican bishop who has been Bishop of Chelmsford uh, since 2021. She was born in Esfahan, Iran, which is the second, I think second or third largest city in Iran. She and her family had to escape Iran following the paramilitary coup of the Islamic occupiers in, in 1979. And they had to come to the West. These are the people who, they're supposed to be the good guys. You know, they're, they're the Christians, Iranian Christians, uh, who have been saved by the West and they should really protect the values of the West, but somehow some of them turn out to be going towards the more the liberal side for whatever reason. And this is undermining the basic traditional values that the Church of England used to have. And these people are actually in favor of eliminating those traditional values because they say they are outdated. Well, the whole concept of the church and everything else is supposed to be traditional and outdated if you're gonna go with that word so you, are you going to not dress like that anymore? Are you not going to have candles anymore? They're traditional, uh, I don't know, rituals and costumes and everything else because they're not modern. They're going to bring it down one step by step. And this is exactly what they're doing. And again, they are, at best, they are clueless that them undermining the church. And again, it's not really just about the church because not everybody actually goes to church. It's just about the Christian values, the conservative values that created the Western side, the Western civilization. They, are, they seem to be fine with what this guy uh, is saying. Some of you might have already seen this cl- a clip I showed you last night. But in case you don't know, because this is still very much relevant to what we're talking about in this video. This is a man in Islamic, uh, well, the man in East London, in Stratford, who was interviewed. And he, I cannot argue against anything he says. He was talking about the decline of church and churches going down and more mosques and uh, the Islamic f- faith is actually going up. Well, he's right, because we are complacent. Let's go to him again. Uh, In uh, this country, in the United Kingdom, and England is part of the United Kingdom, more than 500 churches, which are of course Christian places of worship, more than 500 
hundred uh, brother, slightly more than five hundred Christian churches have closed, and those five hundred, more than five hundred churches, the Muslims have bought them, and now they are Muslim places of worship, masjid. So, which used to be Christian churches, Christian holy places, they are now Muslim places of worship, masjids. So. This is the reality. While the number of Christians is going down, the number of Muslims is going up all the time. All right? And this is a, you know, big lesson to people who think that Christianity is spreading, who think that the Christians are growing in numbers. No, the Christians are growing less and less, whilst the Muslims are growing more. Yeah, he's right. This is what's happening. There are so many issues that need to be addressed. Um, in the live chat, I can see some reactions. Dave Ross is right. The church sold our nation and their souls for money. But unfortunately, Dave Ross is actually spamming the live chat now. Um, so this is the last warning to Dave. We've already seen your comment. Please don't spam it. Don't copy and paste the same comments because it's, it, it's going to flood the whole live chat. Thank you very much for that comment. Um, we go to Smith S. that says, uh, Stop giving free money away on slavery reparations and uh, that's also the other thing that's just a tiny part of uh, what, what, what it's shown as an example of what the church and the rest of our institutions are actually doing which is against the interest of our country this is not us making any excuses for what happened in the past we've already made apologies and apologies we've already spent the country almost went bankrupt in order to abolish slavery and everything else like that and apparently it's never enough and we've, since then, we've been giving so much free money to all those uh, former colonies, uh, obviously in the name of free aid, inter foreign aid and everything else, international aid. Um, but apparently it's not enough. <clears throat> in a nutshell, um, it's, it's globalist elites' efforts to coup uh, the silent uh, majority, uh, while they're also extremely biased uh, to, towards illegal minority all over the world. Yes, that is uh, correct as well. Let me just have a look to see if, if any, anyone's spamming the accounts, uh, the live chat again. Everybody behaving? Everybody? <laughs> if anybody spams, just uh, let me know the name of their account. Uh, anyway, Gary says, there are so many fifth columnists uh, embedded within our country, within the civil service, the Church of England, our universities, Ofcom, the BBC, don't forget the NHS, and all the other um, quangos and regulators. The um, We're actually going to be doing a report later on this channel on 2CTV uh, about uh, it's the same problem inside the civil service. Because again, it's not really a surprise. We have talked about civil service on a regular basis. And this uh, so-called Tory government, the traitors, have also made it worse. Under this conservative government, things have gotten much worse than even under Labour when it comes to civil service, when it comes to... There are certain senior civil servants taking over and actually uh, becoming huge obstacles. Um, Dave says, uh, I have the greatest respect for you. My apologies, Maya. Please keep up the good work. Now, I, I knew that you're a good guy. I just gave you a warning um, before people get annoyed of uh, spamming. Don't worry about it, mate. Tom. <clears throat> Tom Brown says, uh, when the Tories are people smuggling at such high rate, uh, we can't get mad that the other traitors show their true colors. Tom is right. In, in, again, we, we have a problem in this country because of the structure of the country is centralized, which means, yes, elected representatives matter and parliamentarians matter. They also have certain powers. At the same time, the actual state, the establishment, they are permanent and they also have a lot of power. They have the power in terms of daily, daily operations. The politicians have the power to... Uh, technically hold them to account but they're not really doing their job but also create the bigger picture for the future the vision and policies but right now let's not forget about the fact that as tom said the tories seem to be at least by by behavior and attitude encouraging or condoning bad behavior so if you actually had tory ministers and prime minister actually come out to speak out against these rogue elements at least some people in civil service will feel the pressure. But they know. I mean, every single time you had a couple of government ministers speaking out against the, the rogue elements, the fifth columnists, they got they gotten rid of. Whether it was Robert Jendrick, whether it was Suala Bravman, anybody. 
in the past. Some get cancelled, some get pushed out, some resign, some get sacked. Um, the rest of them seem fine with it. Maz Maz says that these people are nuts because this is a scam. This is about the, the fake conversion to Christianity. The Christians are the first to be eradicated alone with the gays. <laughs> Complete idiots. I know. They, they, they think you can basically be so open and progressive and liberal. And if you just invite everybody into your tribe... They will automatically also become progressive and liberal and open-minded and all that. That's not really how humanity works. You can't, unless you want to force them, put a gun to their head, say, be liberal. They're not going to be liberal. <laughs> you can't do that. It will take generations after generations, potentially, for certain cultures to adapt. And some will resist. Avocado Man says, Reform, Reform UK, could split the vote on 80% of Tory seats and see a Labour win, a, a Labour win, a bigger landslide than Blair. Well, we, I think we've gone to a point where uh, the Labour Party wouldn't even need the help of Reform UK or any other third party uh, to get a landslide. Uh, the Tories in each one of those seats that we are talking about, they, they are already giving the seat to the Labour Party with or without Reform UK or the Lib Dems. So... If it was a different election, if we're talking about 2019, for example, then yes, I would agree with that comment. But uh, at this point, if the, the opinion polls continue to go the way it's going and reform getting closer to the Tory side, obviously the vote is more concentrated for Reform UK in certain areas, while the Tories are more spread around, like Labour. But you can make an argument that at that point it's the Tories who will be splitting the Reform UK vote. Um, even though obviously people can, can't say that because they still can't believe a small party, a new party could do well, but you never know. Tom Thumbs says, uh, Christian values being trashed by the woke Church of England. I wonder what uh, Henry VIII uh, would think about all this. Um, or, or, for example, obviously those uh, behind uh, the original rebellion, uh, obviously uh, Cromwell and many others, uh, not Oliver, the other Cromwell, uh, who tried to actually give a warning as well. But it's happened now. Ch we, we left the Vatican, created this, took a while to create stability, a couple of centuries, and then we had a good run. <laughs> and now this church, not really sure what it's up to anymore. Colin says, uh, opening borders, opening asylum entries, creates this problem everywhere. Establishment, guilty, with no care. I really do want to... Be inside some of their heads. They're the heads of their the brains of their certain politicians. The politicians who you're looking at their faces, at, if you want to be generous, you say, well, then they might not be proactively traitors or be villain. But surely are they that stupid? Are they that ignorant? And the answer is sometimes yes, they are really out of touch. Not all of them, some of them are traitors, we know that. But seriously. Absolute crazy stuff was going on. Damon says, Oliver Cromwell was nasty. Yes, that is true. Yeah, I'm not talking about <laughs> that Cromwell, of course. Um, there is going to be a, a discussion uh, in regards to the future of um, church as well. Uh, because, um, again, when we talk about Henry VIII, when we talk about uh, uh, Cromwell, uh, Thomas Cromwell, um, Thomas Cromwell, for example, the whole idea that created the original division and it took Henry's kids, one by one, to go this direction, that direction. Mary did this, and Elizabeth did that. Elizabeth created, Elizabeth I created the, the consensus. But the future of church, we don't really have any vision for that. Um, which means, because it's at this, at the time, you had the values. You had uh, people in the country who believed in the values and faith. So all you needed is just uh, leadership. You know, post Oliver Crom and um, Thomas Cromwell uh, and Henry VIII, there were people with different directions towards Catholicism again, towards obviously Church of England. They created the consensus, but now where are we? Let me know in the live chat. Here, No Evil says, "How is it that just uh, that those who never owned slaves pay those who were themselves near never slaves, while ignoring the fact that uh, it was uh, Africans who sold Africans?" Britain's slime so yeah and th there are some people who I don't know if it's because of the education system or whatever's going on and um, we, we are teaching kids essentially uh, and implying 
that uh, the world was perfect in Africa, in Asia, South America, and suddenly the white Europeans went to all these places and created bad stuff like, oh, we are now in Africa, I'm going to tell these Africans that we're going to steal their people uh, and we're going to use them as commodity. They, they, they already had the trade. They, they, they were the ones who started it. The white Europeans went there, they were actually shocked. They're like, wait, what do you mean? I can buy a human? They're like, yeah, yeah, but buy this one. This is five pounds, this, the other one's seven pounds because it's taller. And they're like, oh, that's interesting. And then they bought them like idiots. And that practice went for ages uh, until, of course, uh, Britain led the world to abolish it. They were already doing it and they're still doing it. It's still going on across the whole world in all the other continents. But we're still, I don't know, instead of focusing on the other continents and all the other countries, backwards countries who are still doing slavery, instead of these people, the activists, to go in there to criticize them, telling them to stop, they're still asking us to apologize even more. How many times? I don't care what happened in the past anymore. You learn from it, you move on. Joe Carroll says uh, England needs uh, to kick them out. Uh, people are done voting for them now. I think this is the government than the Tories, right? Yep. Johnny says uh, Reform UK are more interested in Ukraine <laughs> than our country. I think this is in reference to uh, Richard Tice's trip to Ukraine uh, recently. I think he went to do some, I think it was helping some sort of charity thing. Um, I don't think that was just, that, that was a. Uh, Every single person from Reform UK, that was just Richard Tice doing it as a leader. Uh, but again, he's the leader, right? Um, Bernd Herb says, We are following Afghanistan's history. Weak, self-serving royal family, uh, commie values in government and fascist Islam. All we need is a draft, actually that's a good point, and then a coup by the weirdy, weirdly beardies in bedsheets. <laughs> You, you think it's, it's, it's unlikely. Let's not forget. Similar thing happened in Iran. The complacency in Iran, uh, that liberal secular society in the 70s. Nobody saw it coming. When the coup happened, people were like, oh, well, the king is gone. What do we do now? Cover your faces. AOC Man UK says, uh, don't forget Myers 4,000. 4,000? No, 400,000. 400,000 subscribers. A celebratory piss up tonight. Enjoy if you're going. Yes, uh, I'll straight after this, I'm going to have to run to get the train, guys, to get to my second favorite city, Manchester. Um, unfortunately, there's no game at Old Trafford tonight. Uh, although, well, it would have been at the same time if it was as the, our party. But of course, I'll be looking forward to meeting uh, uh, some of you who are going to be uh, coming to Manchester. Um, and uh, throughout the, the next few hours, while I'm on the train, we're actually going to be about posting a number of reports that I've already done. We've already scheduled some videos for you guys. Uh, and they're very important, by the way, because we have to talk about all the other issues happening in the country and across the world. Because this channel is to, uh, focusing on all the people who believe in life and freedom and sovereignty and nationalism. Uh, well, we're going to be talking about uh, some crazy people who have started another conspiracy theory against me. Uh, and I'm considering to take legal action um, because they are defaming me. Uh, I'm going to, uh, obviously, that's going to be, that video is going to go up around five o'clock. Uh, but we're also going to be talking about the uh, British civil servants who are, at this point, openly and proactively betraying the country and, and a number of other issues as well. Thank you so much uh, for coming to on, on our first live update of the evening. And when we go to Manchester, if you can't make it, don't worry, we're going to do a live stream from the actual party. It's going to be chaos. I, I don't know how that's going to go consider I'm going to be drinking as well. So it's going to be one of the most chaotic live streams we're going to do from Manchester in a few hours at around 7 o'clock. Thanks for watching. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.